Hi, I'm Megan and welcome to my kitchen. In today's What's for Dinner video, I'll be sharing with you what meals we had this past week. Our dinners were easy to make, budget friendly, and delicious. So if you're looking for some weeknight meal ideas for your family, just keep watching. All right, real quick before I get into the dinners, I just wanted to give a quick update or a pup date, we'll call it. So you guys are so sweet. I've had several of you all comment on some of my videos and send me messages over on Instagram asking about Pepper. So I just wanted to give an update real quick. In case you're new to our channel, these are the two dogs that we have. Happy is in the uh, white hoodie. He's was This was on Halloween, so he was a ghost. Um, and Pepper is the little chihuahua mix. He was a bat. Um, we We've had happy for about five years. Pepper was my grandpa's baby. My grandpa loved him so much and we had promised my grandpa that we would take Pepper if anything ever happened. And um, as many of you know who have been with me for a while, my grandfather passed earlier this year. Now, at the time that he had passed, my sister had recently lost one of her dogs. And so um, she went ahead and took Pepper. She had him for a few months. And then she was moving and just, you know, going through a lot personally. So we took Pepper so that she could get settled. And it was kind of in limbo whether we were going to keep Pepper or he was going to go back to my sister. But I talked to my sister a few weeks ago and we decided Pepper's going to stay with us. Um, Happy and Pepper have just bonded. They love each other so much they play so well together um they're just great together and we've got pepper in a routine and everything so we just said let's you know leave pepper where he is so we are so so excited that he is permanently a member of our household now enough chit chatting let's get into these dinners a couple months or so ago, I had Olive Garden's chicken and gnocchi soup for the first time and loved it, but I was like, I can probably make this at home. So I looked up some recipes and made it. It was delicious. Gary and I loved this. We'll absolutely make this again. I'll have the recipe that I linked down in the description box below and I did have the recipe. So let me show you what I did real quick. I'm adding some butter to a sauce pot and on medium heat, I'm gonna allow that butter to melt. Once it's melted, I'm going to add in some diced onion. Now, I had a red onion in my fridge that needed to be used up, so that's what I'm using. Just use what you prefer. And then for the carrots, I had some carrots that were shredded that I needed to use up, so I'm going to add those and then season them with a little salt and pepper and cook them until they're tender. Now, Olive Garden uses celery. The recipe called for celery. If you've been with me for a while, you know I'm not a celery lover. Um, I've been trying to use it more often and like process it really well, but I didn't have any on hand anyway this day, so I just said skip it. Now, while that is sauteing, I have this package of Jim and Nick's cheese biscuit mix. Uh, Jim and Nick's is a barbecue restaurant chain if you're not familiar with them, and I just found this mix at Walmart. I'm going to make it according to the package instructions. Once the veggies are tender, we're going to add in our flour and give that a stir, and then I'm going to cook that for a minute or two so that that raw flour taste comes out. Next, you'll add in your chicken broth. Now, I'm just using some water and chicken bouillon powder. And when you're adding your liquids, you want to add them slowly and make sure you're whisking the whole time. That just helps you not to have lumps. So once I've got that chicken broth stirred in, I'm gonna add in the half and half. And it looks like I added it faster than what I did in real life because I've got this sped up. So once I've got that added, we're gonna add our seasonings. So I'm adding some ground thyme, yellow mustard powder, and then salt and pepper. And I apologize, I said ground thyme, I meant dried thyme. So I've whisked the seasonings in, and then I realized that I was supposed to add some minced garlic to the onions and vegetables, and I forgot, so I'm just gonna add in some garlic powder. Now for the chicken. I had some rotisserie chicken on hand that I needed to use up, so I chopped that and I'm adding it. You can use raw um, chicken for this though. If you're using raw chicken, you would add it to this uh, broth, and then simmer the chicken for about 20, 25 minutes until it's tender and it's at least 165 degrees. Remove the chicken, chop it up, and add it back. But since this is already cooked, we're just going to add in that rotisserie stick, stick in <laughs> chicken, give it a stir, and I allowed this to come to a gentle boil. I simmered this until I was happy with the consistency, which I wanted a little on the thicker side, uh, but if you want it thinner, you can obviously add more broth or half and half. 
So now I'm gonna add in the gnocchi. I just bought this from Walmart and I had a little bit of another package in my pantry. I figured I'd just toss it in and use that package up. When you're adding the gnocchi, do make sure you break it up so that you don't get like a big glob of gnocchi. So I've stirred that in and then you just want to simmer this until the gnocchi is tender. You'll do that according to your package instructions, which for mine I think was like five to seven minutes. Once that's tender, we're going to add in the chopped spinach as well as some red pepper flakes. Give that a stir and then just simmer that for a couple minutes until your spinach is wilted. Now I did give this a taste and you can adjust the seasonings to your taste and this is what the soup looked like when it was done. Here are those Jim and Nick's biscuits. And again, I just cooked those according to package instructions. And then here are the plates. So we've got some of those cheese biscuits, the soup. I garnished the soup with some freshly cracked black pepper. And then right before we ate it, we did sprinkle on a little Parmesan cheese. And like I said, we loved this soup. It was delicious. It was comforting. It was like an Italian chicken and dumplings. It was so good. The next night we did a little date night. We went out to eat at one of our favorite local Mexican restaurants. We started out with the chips and salsa and ordered some queso. And then for the entree, I got the fajitas Jalisco, which is the steak, chicken, and shrimp fajitas. And you know, that comes with all the goodies, the rice, the beans, the guac, pico, tortillas. And then I saw on the menu that they had the uh, Quesa Berea tacos. I think I'm saying that right. So we ordered two a la carte because I've really been wanting to try them. And then for Gary's entree, he got their chimichanga trio. It came with the steak, chicken, and shrimp chimichanga. So for my fajitas, I had two of the fajitas. I made Gary a third fajita, and then we had half the meat and veggies left over. So I took it home, and we made quesadillas the next day for lunch. And we both absolutely loved those burrito tacos. They were delicious. So, so good. The next night, I tried a new recipe for borzen tortellini. Of course, it will be linked down in the description box below. So to get started, I'm going to add some butter to a skillet. This is on medium heat. I'm going to allow that butter to melt. Then I'm going to use a shallot, which the recipe called for shallot, and I normally never have shallots on hand, but I happen to have one this day, so that's what I'm using. Normally, I'd just substitute for um, onion. You can use either or. So I'm gonna give that a little stir and then allow that to cook for a couple minutes until the shallot starts to soften. Now I'm going to add in some chopped asparagus as well as some minced garlic. I'm going to add a little salt and pepper to that, give it a stir and cook that for a couple minutes until the asparagus starts to soften. Now I'm going to add in my chicken broth, or in my case, I'm using some warm water along with chicken bouillon powder. And this is the chicken bouillon powder that I'm using. I'm then going to add in the boars and cheese. I'm using the garlic and fine herbs, really. I think any flavor uh, would be good in this. Boars and can be a little on the pricey side. I found it on sale, uh, but you can also use like alouette or really any kind of flavored cream cheese. Even uh, the chive and onion cream cheese, I think would be good in this. So once I've got that stirred in and the cheese has melted, I'm going to add in some uh, frozen peas. Now for the Parmesan cheese, I have some shredded parm in my fridge I needed to use up, so I'm gonna use that. I'm sure you could use the grated. And then I'm gonna add some freshly cracked black pepper and a uh, little bit of crushed red pepper flakes. This doesn't really make it spicy. I mean, if you added enough, you could make it spicy with the red pepper flakes, but just a little bit kind of gives it a nice little, um, you know, peppery kick in the background. Now, for the tortellini pasta, I forgot to show you all the brand that I used. I apologize. This I got, it was the Kroger brand. It was just dried tortellini pasta, um, but you could use any kind of flavor. This was cheese and spinach. So once I've added in the pasta, I'm going to give it a stir. And then the recipe had said to reserve some of the pasta cooking water to thin this out. I totally spaced and forgot to do that, but I had some um, half and half on hand. So I'm gonna add a little half and half to thin it out. And then you just wanna cook this until everything is heated through and this is what it looked like when it was done and like with everything make this your own you could use different vegetables I think mushrooms or sun-dried tomatoes would be good in this you could also add in some bacon or pancetta and here are the plates so we've got the pasta I did some side salads and then we had some of the Jim and Nick's cheese biscuits left over so I just served that on the side and this was a yummy dinner 
I can't remember now what was on the meal plan for it the next night, but whatever it was, I just wasn't in the mood for it. I wanted something like Southern home cooking. And so I looked in the freezer and pantry and luckily I had things on hand to put something together. So here's what I'm using. First up, I've got this little can of peas. I'm going to warm those up for myself. Gary doesn't love peas. I mean, he'll eat them like as a side dish. Um, he'll eat them, but I have this can of seasoned greens in the pantry. So I'll heat that up for him. I've got this box of Kraft macaroni and cheese. This is the cauliflower. We really love this. I have a package of the Idahoan instant mashed potatoes, some of the peppered gravy mix, and then some frozen Tyson country fried steak patties. So here are those potatoes. I just cooked them according to package instructions, but anytime I make instant mashed potatoes, I always doctor them up with a little bit of milk, butter, salt, and pepper. And then for the peas, I just Drain them, place them into a bowl, added a little pat of butter, salt, pepper, popped them in the microwave. I baked the country fried steak patties in the oven according to the package instructions. For the greens, I just drained the liquid off um, and then added a little bit of salt and pepper and warmed them up. And then I prepared the gravy mix according to the package instructions. And then last but not least for the macaroni and cheese, prepared it according to the package instructions. And then at the very end, I added in a slice of American cheese also added in some black pepper all right here are the plates so gary's is on the left i've got him some of the country fried steak the gravy the greens the macaroni and cheese mine is on the right i've got some macaroni and cheese mashed potatoes and peas and this was this hit the spot now yes you can absolutely make everything from scratch i've shared how i do that before here on my channel but on some nights like this you know having things in your freezer in your pantry that you can just grab and make um, you know, there's nothing at all in the world wrong with that. And, you know, we buy things to keep on hand. And so it's important that we use them up, you know, things go bad. And so if we're not regularly rotating through our pantry, um, you know, we're, we're wasting what we buy. So I try to do these kinds of nights every once in a while where I just use things up that I've got on hand. For dinner the next night, I tried a new recipe. I made whiskey peach glazed salmon. Now, the recipe actually called for bourbon. I didn't have any on hand, so I substituted the whiskey for it. I'll put the recipe down below for you. So, for the salmon, I found this on Markdown at um, Kroger a couple months or so ago. Had it in my freezer. I just allowed it to thaw. The recipe just said to season the um, salmon with salt and pepper, but I'm using the Kinder's Brown Sugar Garlic. If you've watched my videos here lately, you know I love this seasoning on salmon. Salmon, it's delicious. So I'm just going to season both sides of the salmon. I placed the salmon on some aluminum foil because we're going to make a sweet glaze to go on top of the salmon later. And then the recipe said to broil this, but these salmon fillets were on the thin side and I, I just didn't want to do that. I didn't want to risk the salmon getting overcooked. So I popped this into a preheated 400 degree oven and because the salmon was so thin, it only took about eight minutes to bake. Now I'm gonna get started on the glaze while the salmon is baking. And this is what actually inspired me to make this recipe. Um, there's, I don't know if this is just a Nashville thing or if it's national, but there's um, like a food truck here in Nashville called the Peach Truck and they have fresh peaches during the summer. And Gary saw them one day and grabbed me some peach jam. So I wanted to use that up. So I've added the peach jam to this bowl. Then I'm going to add in the honey followed by the whiskey. Now. Every time I've shown one of these zero proof alcoholic beverages, I get somebody commenting or messaging me on Instagram being like, where did you find a zero proof, uh, you know, liquors? And I just found them at um, a liquor store here in Nashville. Now, at, you know, your everyday liquor stores, usually you can find um, zero proof beverages, but normally they only have, you know, a couple kinds. I found these at, I guess you'd call it like a liquor warehouse. Uh, it's in Brentwood, Tennessee, which is just south of Nashville. I think it's called like Total Wines. You can also find these online. So I've added that. Finally, I'm going to add some garlic powder, chipotle powder, salt and pepper, and then get that a really good mix. This is what the salmon looked like when it came out of the oven. I'm going to take that glaze and brush it all over the salmon. And you want to be generous with this. I took a brush and made sure I got it all over the sides. And then I popped this back in the oven. I broiled it for a couple minutes until that uh, glaze got really nice and sticky. Make sure you watch it though, because with all that sugar, it can burn very quickly on you. 
For one of the sides, I tried a new recipe for a broccoli cheddar orzo. I saw this on Instagram. I'll link it down below. In this skillet, I'm gonna add in a little bit of olive oil, and this is on medium heat. I'm then going to add in some chopped onions and carrots. I'm gonna season it with a little salt and pepper, and then I'm going to cook this for a couple minutes until those veggies get tender. Next, I'm going to add in my orzo pasta. Now, I'm using whole wheat orzo. You could just use regular if you prefer. I'm gonna add in the orzo, give it a stir. And if you're not familiar with orzo, it is, I know it looks like rice, but it's pasta. It's just pasta shaped like little rice. All right, so now I'm gonna add in the seasonings. We've got some garlic powder, onion powder, paprika, and then the recipe called for Italian seasoning, but I just forgot to grab it. I'm next adding some kosher salt and freshly cracked black pepper. I'm gonna give that a good stir and then cook this for about two or three minutes. And you don't have to constantly stir it, but I would keep an eye on it and make sure you give it, you know, a couple stirs. After a couple minutes or so, we're going to add in some chopped broccoli. I just took some broccoli florets and took this little chopper here and just, you know, gave it a few good whacks and it chopped it right up for me. So I'm gonna give the broccoli a little stir and then add in my chicken broth, or again, I'm using water and chicken bouillon powder. I'm gonna give this a stir and then bring this to a boil, reduce it to a simmer. You could cover it if you want, I didn't cover it, um, but you just wanna cook this for maybe about 12 to 15 minutes or so. Just check your orzo package instructions. You wanna cook it until the orzo is tender. Now, because I used the whole wheat, I did have to cook it a couple extra minutes than you would you know, regular pasta. So once the orzo is tender, we're gonna add in the, I'm using half and half because that's what I've got on hand. I think the recipe called for heavy cream. Next, I'm adding in some shredded cheddar cheese, and I just eyeballed the cheese, to be honest with you. <laughs> I'm gonna add that and then give it a stir, and really, that's it. I just cooked it for a couple minutes until the cheese was all melted. Give it a taste, adjust the seasonings to your taste. I had a bag of sugar snap peas that I really needed to use up, so I trimmed the edges off, added them to a baking sheet, drizzled them with some olive oil, and then seasoned them with the Kinder's blend. It's just salt, pepper, and garlic. Tossed them, and I baked them along with the salmon at 400 degrees for about seven to nine minutes until those peas were tender. Here's the salmon once it came out of the broiler. And I wasn't really sure about this, but that glaze was delicious. Like I said, I can't wait to try it on chicken and pork. Here are those sugar snap peas, and they were simple, but delicious. I don't think I've ever had just like roasted sugar snap peas like that before, but it was good. And then we, of course, have the cheddar broccoli orzo. And here are the plates. So we've got the salmon. I did garnish it with a little bit of green onions. We've got the orzo and the sugar snap peas. And like I said, we really enjoyed this dinner. Next up, I've really been wanting to try my granny's chili. Um, my granny, in case you're new to my channel, she was my mother's mother, and she passed away when I was 13. I was extremely close to her. Um, she's really where I developed a, a love of cooking between her and my dad. Um, but anyway, she used to make chili, and she made it more like a soup, and she would add spaghetti to it. And I don't have any of her recipes, unfortunately, but I got with my mom, and and, you know, my mom told me how she remembered she made it. And then I just was looking online and Pinterest and found a recipe. So I'll link it down in the description box below. That's pretty close to how my grandma made it. So let's make this and, um, you know, see how close we can get to Granny Chili. I've got a pot here with some olive oil in it. I'm going to turn this on medium heat and then add in some diced onions. I'm gonna cook those for a few minutes until the onions are tender. Now, I decided to start this chili this morning because I wanted it to simmer for a few hours. And then I feel like chili is always better, um, you know, like the next day or hours later. So I just made this earlier in the day and then allowed it to sit and heated it back up for dinner. Now, I did add a little salt and pepper to those onions, one, to give them flavor, and two, the salt helps the onions onions kind of break down a little faster. Next, I'm going to add in some chili powder and give that a stir. And I'm going to cook the chili powder and the onions together for, um, you know, maybe a minute or so along with some cumin. Now, 
Granny always kept her spices really, really simple. Chili powder and cumin is probably about as fancy as she got. But of course, you can absolutely add whatever spices you want. You could also add in some bell pepper, jalapeno peppers, whatever. So once I've added those spices, I'm going to add in some ground beef. Now, I'd already cooked this ground beef a few days before. I didn't want it to go bad on me, but you could add in the ground beef raw and then just cook it, you know, until there's no longer any pink. You may need to drain off some of the fat if you do that. Now, mom said granny use pinto beans, but I had this can of mixed chili beans in my pantry that I want to use up, so I'm going to use that instead, and I don't think granny would have a problem with that at all. She was a big proponent of using what you got. So now I'm going to add some crushed tomatoes. Mom said that granny normally would use um, like canned whole tomatoes that she had canned herself, and she would crush them up with her hands as she added them to the chili pot, and then she would also use tomato juice that she canned herself. Sorry, Granny, I haven't, you know, progressed <laughs> to canning my own tomatoes and tomato juice. I'm just using this stuff from the store. And I'm just kind of eyeballing it. You can see I give it a stir. I add a little more tomato juice. You'll see later on I probably add a little more tomato juice and crushed tomatoes. So I decided that I wanted to add in some more beans. So I grabbed another can of chili beans from the pantry, added that, gave it a stir. And then I'm going to add in some salt and pepper off camera. I did add in a pinch of sugar, especially for that tomato juice. It's pretty acidic. So just to kind of cut the acidity. Now I'm going to give that a really good stir and then simmer this. You can simmer this for as little or as long as you want to. You do it for 30 minutes or all day. I simmered it for a couple hours and then I removed half of the chili and allowed it to cool to put into the freezer. Gary's not a chili fan, and so, um, you know, I, I didn't want the whole thing to go to waste. I knew I wouldn't eat this amount of chili, you know, just by myself in a couple days. So I added in a little bit of water because I felt like Granny's was a little more liquidy, and once I added in the water and stirred it, I took some thin spaghetti noodles, I broke them into pieces, added them, and then just simmer that for maybe 15, 20 minutes or so until your spaghetti noodles are tender. All right, here is the finished chili. And y'all, uh, to be honest, I don't know why Granny added spaghetti to her chili. I don't know if it's a like South Central Kentucky thing. I don't know if it was just stretching the chili. I don't know if part of it is Kentucky and Cincinnati, you know, are kind of close. And so parts of Kentucky, and I don't know if the Cincinnati chili is kind of why, but either way, it's delicious. Here is a picture of my plate. I've got the chili, the shredded cheese, and then I made myself a grilled cheese sandwich. Gary was at the gym when I had dinner, so when he came home, he just had some leftovers from dinner, and I apologize. I misspoke earlier. When I said Gary's not a fan of chili, that's not really accurate. He likes it okay, but it doesn't love him, <laughs> so he usually will pass on it unless it's like chili dogs or something like that, but this was, this, y'all, this completely took me back to my childhood. I really, really enjoyed, um, you know, trying to recreate this recipe and bring back those memories of having it as a little girl. The last dinner I've got for you all this week are teriyaki chicken skewers. So a couple months or so ago, I made like the viral garlic parmesan chicken skewers. And when I made those that night, I thought, you know what? This would be delicious teriyaki style. And so I didn't follow a recipe for this. I just kind of threw it together, but I'll show you what I did. So first in this bowl, I've got some chicken breasts that I just cut up. Now these were on the thinner side. So I cut them a little larger um, because I was, you know, gonna fold them to put on the skewers. For the seasonings, really, you could add whatever seasonings you prefer. I just recently got this Kinder's Japanese barbecue seasoning, and I've been wanting to try it. I thought it would be good on this, and it was. So I just seasoned the chicken with that and then added some teriyaki sauce. Use your favorite. Use homemade. I like the Sweet Baby Ray's teriyaki sauce. So I gave that a stir, and then I just set that out covered on my counter. Uh, well, no, I'm sorry, covered in the refrigerator and allowed it to marinate for like about an hour. You don't have to let it marinate if you don't have the time, um, but if you do have the time, even like 15, 20 minutes, I'd let it marinate if you can. I took the chicken and just added it to some wooden skewers. Now, my intention was to alternate the chicken with some uh, fresh pineapple, but to be honest with you, I forgot until I had the chicken all skewered. <laughs> so I just skewered the pineapple separately. And then I'm cooking these in the air fryer. You can grill these. You can cook them on top of the stove, in the oven, whatever you prefer. But in the air fryer, I sprayed the air fryer, of course. I cooked these at about 380 degrees for five minutes, gave them a flip, cooked them for another maybe five to 10 minutes or so, and then brushed both sides with some more of the teriyaki sauce. And then I popped them back in the air fryer for a couple minutes. Just make sure you cook the chicken until it's at least 165 degrees internal temperature. 
For one of the sides, I'm making Asian roasted broccoli and carrots. I've shared this before on my channel, but I think it's been a little while and I wanted to share it again. This is an easy and delicious side dish. So I've got some just odds and ends of carrots. I'm gonna use up as well as some baby carrots. I just try to cut them into pieces so that they were, you know, as evenly sized as possible. I placed them on a foil lined baking sheet, which I would suggest using foil or parchment paper. I drizzled the carrots with some olive oil and then added some salt and pepper. I'm going to give that a little toss and then place this into a preheated 425 degree oven. And you're gonna bake these for maybe 15 to 20 minutes or so. It really just depends on how big you cut your carrots. You just wanna cook them until they are just tender. Once the carrots were just tender, I'm gonna add my broccoli. So just took some fresh broccoli. I washed it, of course. I chopped it up. I'm gonna add it to my carrots. And then I do veer off the recipe just a little bit. I'm pretty sure she says to add the sauce at the end after the broccoli cooks, but I like to add the sauce with the broccoli. So in this little bowl, we're gonna mix up the sauce. We're adding some soy sauce, brown sugar, sesame oil, rice vinegar, sriracha and i'm going to give that a really really good mix now these are not spicy by any means you could of course add more sriracha if you want to add a little more spice to it so once that's mixed together really well i'm just kind of gathering up the vegetables into the center i'm going to drizzle that sauce over them give it a really good toss and then this is going to go back into the oven and bake for about seven to ten minutes until the broccoli is tender I was going to serve this with some jasmine rice, but while I was in the pantry getting the brown sugar, I saw these noodles. These are the momofuku noodles, and I thought, you know what? That just sounds really good. So I cooked the noodles according to the package instructions, which was just to boil them for three minutes. I drained them. I'm adding them to the bowl, and then I'm going to add the little sauce packets. These are the soy and scallion ones. So the first packet is the soy sauce sauce, <laughs> and then the second packet are the dried scallions. So I'm going to give that a really good mix, and then that's it. We're ready to plate everything up. So here are the teriyaki chicken skewers, and then we've got those momofuku noodles. And I find those at Target. They are a little on the pricey side, I will admit, uh, but they are pretty tasty. So to go along with the noodles, I'm gonna chop up some green onions, and then we've got those uh, roasted carrots and broccoli. Here are the plates. We have the veggies, the noodles, the chicken, and the pineapple. And y'all, this was delicious. This was so good. We ended up mixing our um, vegetables with the noodles. And then I had some yum yum sauce in the refrigerator. And while I was eating it, I was like, you know what? Yum yum would be good on this. So we did a little drizzle of yum yum. It, it was just delicious. I'll make this again. This was so good. And that is it for this week's What's for Dinner video. Thank you so much for watching. I hope you liked this video. I hope you got some dinner ideas from it. If you did, hit the thumbs up button below and subscribe to my channel if you're not already. Hope you have a great rest of the day. Thanks so much. Bye-bye.